welcome to Bottom Hill Geography. Today we're looking at the ex exploration of the Lesotho Highland Water Project, a monumental water transfer scheme designed to address South Africa's water shortages and promote sustainable water supplies. Let's get into it. The Lesotho Highland Water Project aims to transfer 40% of the water from the Segu, the Orange River in Lesotho, to the River Vaal in South Africa. This ambitious project involves the construction of dams, reservoirs, pipelines, roads, bridges and other infrastructure developments. Overall, the scheme is expected to take 30 years to complete, but will substantially decrease Africa's water insecurity or water scarcity. Key features of the project include the Katse and Mahali dams completed in 1988 and 2002 respectively. These dams store water that is transferred through a tunnel to the Mahali reservoir within South Africa. From the Mahali Reservoir, the water is transferred to South Africa via a 32 km tunnel. This enables hydroelectric power production at the Moela plant, which then can be utilised by Lesotho, who currently have nothing of this scale. The Poly Halley Dam, with a capacity of 2.2 billion cubic metres, will fe uh, feature a 38 km transfer tunnel. It's a bit of a mouthful, that. Additionally, the So-like Dam, uh, to be built at the confluence of the So-like and St. Croix rivers, will have a storage capacity of 2.223 billion cubic metres and a pumping station. All of this will be beneficial for Lesotho. The Notahai Dam will, and pumping station will be constructed 40 kilometres downstream from the So-like Dam on the St. Croix River. You're kind of getting the idea that this is a very large scale project. By 2020, the project aims to have 200 kilometers of tunnels and transfer 2 billion cubic meters of water to South Africa every year. This would substantially improve their water supply. Now you might be thinking, what are the benefits for Lesotho? This project brings significant advantages to them. It's aiming to produce 75% of its GDP and improving the standard of living through income from the scheme. It's going to supply all of Lesotho's hydroelectric power needs and enhance its infrastructure for transport with new access roads. So, lots of benefits for them. The new and improved water supplies, as through their storage systems, will reach 90% of the population in the capital, Maseru, and sanitation coverage will increase from 15-20%. to 20%. Now, it's important to note that Lesotho was an area of relative economic water scarcity, so while they had supplies, they weren't able to access all of it or store it. However, as always, projects do have drawbacks. The construction of the first two dams displaced 30,000 people and destroyed a unique wetland ecosystem. Corruptions also hindered the benefits uh, distribution to those affected by the construction itself, with many people now being left homeless. So what does South Africa have to gain? The project provides water to areas with uneven rainfall and regular droughts, ensuring safe water for 10% of the population without access. The influx reduces the acidity of the Var River Reservoir as well, which also helps to restore local ecosystems. Now, Despite these benefits, the project does face challenges, including high costs estimated at about $4 billion, water loss through leakages as you can see in the video behind us, and increased water tariffs and corruption. The Lesotho Highland Water Project exemplifies the complexities of large-scale water transfer schemes. While it does address water scarcity and promote sustainable water supplies, it does also highlight the need for careful management, equitable distribution and environmental protection. As we look into the future, the Lesotho Highland Water Project serves as a reminder of the importance of sustainable water management, ensuring a secure and prosperous future for all. This is not a good example of sustainable water management, of course. Now, over the next two slides, you'll find our summaries. Please do feel free to pause and take your notes. Okay, so here are two example questions, and I have of course got model answers on the following two slides. However, the first question is quite interesting, as is the second. We 
We can take both of them in the context of either Lesotho or South Africa. Try and apply that knowledge from the last two summary slides into your answers before you have a look. Thank you for watching Bonhill Geography. I'll catch you in the next video.